Oh, I didn't see you there. Today we have actor, playwright, <laughs> renaissance woman from Pennsylvania by way of the world. She's got a new play up at the Atlantic starting January 10th. Give it up for Angelica Don't mind me just drinking my playwright juice. <laughs> Well, Nguzi, thank you for coming on. Thanks for having me. Oh my god, you got a new play coming up. I do. So exciting. I do. It's terrifying and exciting. <laughs> <laughs> That's what new plays are. Yeah. <laughs> so just for our viewers, yeah. the play is basically about uh, this uh, writer, this a Nigerian writer. Yeah, a Nigerian writer who's a best-selling novelist who goes back to where she was born and raised to care for her father. Gotcha. Um, and she sort of met with all the things that she has left behind, including her culture mm -hmm. um, and her family and some other things. No spoiler alerts here. The, the goal was to originally write an adaptation of The Visit, actually. Mm -hmm. um, oh. I wanted to write like this like revenge story. Yeah. And then I was like, revenge, like men, I'm like, get out of here. Yes. And then I was like, no. <laughs> I kind of wonder, like, it was just turning very much into a father, daughter, family love story. So, um, <laughs> on our show before, we've had, uh, we had Steve Natalie Gerges last time, we've also had your friend, Jocelyn Bio, mm -hmm. um, who talked about your play, actually, yeah. on her episode. And um, they are both actors and playwrights. Yeah. And I know that you, are, you as well mm -hmm. are, uh, you're a Renaissance woman, you're an actor Producer, and a director, playwright. All oh, stuff, all stuff. Oh, I didn't realize. I That's make amazing. the stuff when no one asks. <laughs> That's what I do. Yeah. So do you find, I mean, do you find that challenging though? Like having to, like if you're so used to the acting process, suddenly having to be a writer or, or vice versa? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's all hard. Um, and the writing thing for me is rather new. That's probably as like playwright identity that's come up in the last like three or four years. Um, so that's been just difficult because I didn't go to school for that. I didn't train in that while for acting, you know, I've been, I went to school for that, like almost seven years of training um, for oh, acting as an yeah. actor. And like there's no, I took no training for playwriting. I think I took like a class at like uh, primary stages, like a, you know what I mean? Um, a workshop. Or yeah, you know, and so I've been very much just like learning as I go, workshopping as I go and uh, learning how to do it as I go, which has been really cool, but also just really challenging as far as um, knowing my place as a playwright in the room. Um, especially as my first play I acted in, and this one I'm not acting in, so it's definitely like a different uh, process and like challenging in different ways. Yeah. I mean, speaking of that, uh, this is your first off Broadway play. Yeah, yeah, this is my off Broadway debut. Right. But you had a regional production of a play called Good Grief, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, which you, uh, you worked at the Rising Circle, right? Yeah, I worked at that Rising Circle. Yeah, uh, I, I did Rising Circle too. That's yeah, what I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, Rising Circle. Right yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, yeah. So you did, that was Good Grief, and that was in LA, correct? Uh huh. But you were also in that. I was in that as well, yeah. yeah. Tell me about that. Oh, uh, wow, that was intense. Um, also, the play was very autobiographical, and it was um, about my best friend that I had lost, uh, one of my best friends that I had lost when I was 20. Um, so it was also just a really emotional play to do right. every day and work on. Um, and the play was about grief and losing people. Um, and so to do a play where you kind of actually conjure up this person that you once knew on stage, like eight to nine shows a week in that regional schedule. Um, <laughs> uh, for the kids, Gozi loves the kids. Um, she does. I she do, really does. I really do. Um, was like wonderful, because basically, you know, you get to have catharsis every day on stage, but it was hard. It was beautiful, but it was hard to do. It was a hard show to do, yeah. Um, did, did, was that planned or did that just sort of happen? Uh, when I first wrote the play, I actually wrote it for one of my best friends, Susan Hayward. Hi, Susan Hayward. Uh, yeah. Hi, Susan Hayward. So she did one of the first readings of the play. Yeah. Um, and we had done another reading when I got out of grad school um, and she had done a reading of it again. Um, I was sort of like between New York and LA and we decided to like put up a workshop production of it. She had booked multiple television shows at that point. And so I was like, I'll step into it just cause it's a good guaranteed way for that the person to not quit. Cause we're doing it like showcase contract, <laughs> paying like subway fare. And so I stepped into it and when I stepped into it, I was like, I didn't want to let it go. Right. Um, so then I was like, oh no, it's, it's my play to do. You can do it after, um, you being whoever. Um, and so yeah, so that's sort of how I sort of uh, stepped into it originally. But now people are like, there's no way that you could have not done that, because it's so you. I'm like, yeah, because it's me. Right. <laughs> um, so it's, it's sort of a strange thing to have a play that's so autobiographical, but not like a one person show. Um, that's sort of centered around my experience, but it's still also a fictional play. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, uh, it was wonderful to do. 
Hopefully we'll bring it to New York. We're still trying to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it was super exciting. It's just really, it's hard, it's hard in the emotions, that particular play is hard. Right. If you yeah. do bring it to New York, do you think that it's something that you're gonna wanna step into again? Or do you think that you're, that you, you'd want to see it from another person's perspective? Um, I think we'll see. I think it depends on how long it takes. I think if it comes like sure. next year, next season, I think I'll feel like up to it. Um, mm -hmm. But it was just a really, it was a difficult time to do a play when it had come out. It was like, it was, you know, the 13th anniversary of my friend's passing when when we were auditioning the play, a good friend of mine had also passed away along the same time. Trump became fucking president. It, we were just mourning a lot. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh. We were just mourning Jesus. life. Uh, so, but the room was beautiful. The director was beautiful. The theater was wonderful to us. Mm -hmm. So it was a beautiful experience. It was just like, you know, it, it was, was a lot. It was a lot. It was a lot yeah. to do. So, you know, a year, year and a half later to do the play again, I might want to do it. But if it's two or three years, I might be like, you know what, I'm good. I'm good on this play. And then I'd want someone else to have that sort of experience as an actress. So both of those plays uh, have a very, uh, have, have a similar theme in that both of them are kind of homecoming plays. Mm -hmm. um, good Grief, I believe you returned to Pennsylvania. Yeah. And in The Homecoming Queen, you returned to Nigeria. Yeah. So like, what draws you to that theme? Um, as someone who is, I'm, I'm first generation, and so as someone who I think is, is as someone who's bicultural, you mm -hmm. know, I feel at times very African and mm -hmm. uh, very American and pulled between many identities as a black woman, but as a black woman raised in a very white suburb, um, but um, as someone who's also like very African and, you know, has a very Nigerian name, um, I kind of tend to talk about things that are really personal. And so like, you know, with Good Grief, that was a very autobiographical thing and dedicated to someone very special. And this play is very much dedicated to my dad and my heritage. So for me, it's like I try and pull some things that are really sort of um, intimate and sort of like intimate thoughts. And if I think about the intimate stuff, then I'll actually want to write it. Um, and so that stuff tends to be about myself or my family. And it's not necessarily them, but it's all sort of very much inspired by the things that I'm struggling with and so like the first play was about struggling with grief and getting over someone and the fact that you don't and this play I think is struggling with how to reconcile family and heritage and trauma um, and what healing actually is within a black community and, and this specific black community being Nigerian. I just tried to be really specific about this other place that I'm still learning about. Like I'm from, my, my family's from there, but there's still a lot that I don't know about. So mm -hmm. it was also a great chance to like, you know, bother my parents and uncles and cousins on Facebook. Like, how do you translate oh. that? How do you do that? How do you say that? So it's also for me, because I'm not bilingual. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Oh, really? I'm not, not bilingual, yeah, no. Yeah, I was reading the script, I'm like, oh. Yeah, there's a lot of foreign stuff in there. Yeah. I had to like, I had to like, you know, I had to call. Oh, translate. Yeah. No. Yeah, I mean, I try to do that, but we actually we have a lot of first generation Nigerians and uh -huh. immigrant Nigerians in the play. Oh, so, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so they were able to be like, "Where'd you get this translation from?" And I was like, "Wikipedia." <laughs> yeah. You know, and then also the thing, the specific, the specificity of the village of what we're talking about yeah. and how that dialect is different from the other dialect, and literally like. Facebooking my cousins right, right. and be like, "Yo, I will send you some money on MoneyGram right. if you tell me about this translation." <laughs> right, right, right. Yes, so we get a lot of hey, look. You look. The Igbo look, people, that's real. Right? Igbo. 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 Yeah. Sorry. So yeah, and Igbo specifically Mbise, like, is you know a town where we are from that is a specific kind of Igbo mm -hmm. as opposed to if you're from a different state, you know. Yeah. So um, I imagine yeah. that must have been such an enriching experience. It was great. It was great. You know, um, I wanted to try and get. Um, to Nigeria before we start rehearsal, but you know some of those checks don't come in on time, so we didn't get to oh, do that. Oh man, you know, you know, it's the struggle of the writer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the grant proposal right there. Look. Bring it to Nigeria. Yeah. Look. Bring it to Nigeria. Yeah. Look, that's okay. Yeah. That, that play got written anyway, but I'm just saying. For this uh, this production. Mm -hmm. You have Mufoni Zodofia, who is also a playwright, wrote Sojourners mm -hmm. and her portmanteau. She's a bad, and bad she's woman. playing mm. the lead. She is. I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait a That's minute. the story. Yeah, I was like, wait yeah. a minute. You so you got a writer to play. Yes, I did. Was that like Cross. from the jump? Was that something? Oh, this is what I want to do. Are you closer to? Mufoni? I am Mufoni. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, hey. I, I've known her for God. I don't know. No, since like 2009? 
not forever, I guess, like, you know, right. but almost like seven or eight years. Um, we actually were in this writing project group called the First Generation Nigerian Project. Mm -hmm. So it was me, yeah. her, uh, Joanna Toma, um, Jennifer Akabu, and um, in, in this iteration, and Yvonne Oji, who's on Insecure. Um, and so we used to write um, and produce play, and John Goodwin was our director. And we used to, um, you know, make this project about being first generation female artists. And so we've known each other for years. And that was sort of in the beginning when she became sort of, when she started writing her plays. Um, and yeah, so we've been in touch. Uh, I've workshopped her plays as an actor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I have done a number of workshops in the last year of this play, and I had asked her to do a super early one. She wasn't able to do it. And so we were just kind of like, I'm okay, I'll buy my time. I'm all like, you know, <laughs> like I know you're busy. I know you put me a playwright at all. I know you're getting the reviews, but right, right, right. you know, I just very much had an idea of like, I wanted a scribe to talk about being a scribe. Mm -hmm. and, um, and she's also Nigerian. We're from neighboring parts of Nigeria cult culturally. We're not the same tribal group, we're right. not the same mm -hmm. ethnic group, but similar. Um, um, and I was just like, I think this would work out. So I had asked her to do a workshop, and I knew she was interested because she would, though she had turned me down for a right. workshop, she sent me an email being like, I'm not turning it down because I don't want to do it, I'm turning it down because I'm not available. Mm -hmm. So we just kept trying out other actors mm -hmm. um, that were cool, but I was like, oh, but I kind of use workshops as just a, play a playground to try out other artists. So uh, she had done the New Harmony workshop. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Um, that that's we had, in Indiana? That's in Indiana, New Harmony, Indiana. Yeah. Uh, shout out to New Harmony. Um, to you. And <laughs> uh, we had asked her to do it, and uh, she did it, and I was like, it's her. Like, just from that workshop, I was like, it's her. Um, and uh, yeah, and then I had jumped into it as an actor later on in New York State in film because, you know, I was like, maybe I will do my own play again. And then for me, I was like, oh, the play's not done. And when I have to have like my playwright epiphany, uh, rehearsal's canceled because <laughs> I got to go write the play. Right, right. So I was like, oh, no, this play still doesn't feel done. And I want the freedom to be able to walk out of the room. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I still need, I need an actor to step in. And so schedules worked out. Um, and she, you know, was not scared of us and didn't, and said yes. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, she's gonna be fucking kick ass. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> she's gonna be, she's awesome. as good an actress it's, as she is playwright. Her playwriting is amazing. Yes, so. I'm saying, I'm just saying. She's gonna, yeah. she's gonna, so yeah. I mean, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of the New York Times theater section, but her yeah. play was uh, like top 10 best of play. Yeah, but they got yeah. that shit wrong the first time. I don't know if you read the first review of Sojourners. I it was not, not kind and it was oh, not so, correct. So no. Anti shout out New York Times. <laughs> I wish an Isher would. Right. Anyway, it's all, so, good. It's, all good. it's all good. But you know, I, you know that's that is what it is. Right. Uh, but she's she's really fantastic. Yeah. Um, so you know, I I was able to read the play, mm. and I noticed that there was very a dreamlike quality mm. to your aesthetic. Um, Specifically for this play, I'm not really familiar with the other ones, but is that something uh, you return to a lot, or is this sort of? Uh, a one I'm not sure. Like this is maybe the second. This is the second completed play. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think I only have like three plays done right now. I'm working on a commission at the Old Globe with another play, and that one has like no structure to it whatsoever. So. I'm not sure if that's just something that's like, that's easy for me, like flashback or like memory or whatever. Um, was that something in Good Grief or no? Good Grief was just, it's nothing but, it, 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 I mean, it's backwards, forwards, through oh, time. Okay. Oh, so it is sort of similar. Dreamlike, yeah, you know, with, yeah, yeah, plays with structure. And so it plays with structure, plays with time, plays with dreams, plays like, this is how it would be, this is how it actually is. Right, right. Um, I, I, I want to yeah. say like memory play, but I'm not sure if that's totally the right I word. mean, in Homecoming Queen, there are some plays of time and past, and, and, and there's some dream stuff in there. Um, so I do like to sort of like funk up a structure because I, you know, everyone has a good dream sequence. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah. yeah. Shout out to dream sequences. <laughs> shout out to dream sequences. <laughs> well, you know what? I read, this, um, I read an article with Jose Rivera like, years ago. He's and a big he influence. Was, He's a big influence. Yeah, yeah. and he was, um, you know, when his, when his works came out, he was described as this, you know, very pioneering um, new magical realism. Mm -hmm. And he went on the record to say, you know, like, I don't really like uh, that term magical realism. I prefer the term mad realism. Yeah. Because it has like, you know, the, the twofold kind of Because it's legit. Like, that is mad realism. That's that real. Is, like, it's mad. That's like, how you think of so things like, and that's how you remember things. Mad and that's how realism. You the past. And so this play I feel like is not as, it's it's much more linear mm -hmm. um, than Good Grief, um, but there are some switches where you're like, what's happening? Um, 
but the goal is really to really yeah because it's about past and remembering and holding on to things and letting go of things and the audience needs to see the things that this person's holding on to so um so that was a lot of the things were like the reasons for like those little memory things because it's like i want the audience to see what this character is uh is holding on to and i want them to want her to let it go <laughs> you know or maybe they won't maybe they're like you can't forgive that person or you know whatever that thing is but i want them to sort of follow through her psyche um, and uh, I just feel like well, they'll invest more. They'll have yeah. like a much more, and they'll more they'll reason. get into it. You know, the whole the even the set is built for you to actually feel like you are part of the house and you are part of this Ooh. household. Um, Ooh. Yeah. Our set set da 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 Ushen. Shout out to you. Ushen. I'm not gonna try to pronounce that. You're the business. You're the business. You brought this up a little bit as you were discussing. Um, reaching out to your relatives yeah. and and figuring out translations. Mm. When it came to your characters, I, I, I'm always just fascinated mm. with with titles and names. How did you come up with the names of your characters? And are there are there deeper meanings that we don't know about yet? Um, I usually use family names. Mm -hmm. Ekajuba is not my family name. It's like the it's like the other half of like my mom's family name. Mm. So I'm an Ayawo, my mother's maiden name is Nhoma, and her like in-laws are like Eka Jubas. And so, um, so, and I just like the sound of that name, and it means something that I don't want to say what it means, because you'll hear in the play what it means. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, but yeah, and so, and then I use this very common Igbo names that are like, the names I would mm. hear. I've only been to Nigeria a few times, but I tried to use every single name I ever heard. Mm -hmm. um, and the people of, of, yeah, so I use like, like Kalechi is the name of the name, main character. I have like three or four cousins named Kalechi. Oh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like Jennifer in Igbo. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's a bit like my name is like, my name is probably the most common name in, mm -hmm. in, in Nigeria for an Igbo girl. Um, so yeah, I just, Obinna, these are just very common, Godwin, these are just very common. Mm -hmm. So that if a Nigerian or an Igbo person walked into the room, they would go. Like, Your name is my name too. Yeah, and they would go. This girl is evil. This writer knows what she's talking about, or this she has she knows these people. So oh, really? yeah, because there's there's very common names. If I started to go like Nawang Chuku, like like like, oh, she's trying to be fancy. Like, <laughs> nah. Uh, I also need to have mercy on my actors who are not Igbo. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. Um, but like these names are just like very common. Mm -hmm. You walk into uh, Emo State and Bise, you know that these are the names that you'll hear. So. Nothing super deep with everyone's name, but just sort of like this is this is the people. What inspires you, and what player of players do you feel like you know I can just get into anytime? Rajiv Joseph. Oh shit, mm. Rajiv Joseph. I'm a big oh, fan well, of. Oh yeah. well, Rajiv Joseph. He's also an Atlantic fan. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. His show just closed. Yeah. Um, I like his intimate conversations when his stuff taps into the really intimate, just two people talking mm -hmm. and like saying like you know, and it's it's like it's like and it's like love shit mm -hmm. um, between like men especially that he really I think has tapped into in a really lovely intimate way that I'm very inspired to write. I'm very inspired by his writing. Oh, cool. um, Jose Rivera I'm very inspired by. Yeah. Um, Dominique Morso. Oh, yeah. Um, love her. So yeah, good. Dominique Morso. Said that last episode. Yeah, love Morisot, like, love Dominique. you know, like Great. very early in her writing, I was, you know, just like she, when I was in grad school, <sighs> she would let me read her plays because oh. I was trying to look, I was trying to look at uh, grad school, like, uh, like showcase scenes yeah. and she was early in her career and she would like send me plays and I'd be like, oh you're so good. <laughs> <laughs> But as far as theater goes, I really see everything, if I can. Even when I don't have time, I really, I check out everything and try and pull the things that I dig and try and forget the things that I don't dig. Um, um, yeah, so I, I try and see a lot of Ars Nova stuff, just structure-wise, because they, they don't give a fuck. He's a playwright. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love them. Mm -hmm. Yo, playgroup was good. Yeah. <laughs> out here. <laughs> out here in these streets. <laughs> um, but, because they don't give a fuck. Um, and so I really 
I try and c catch Bushwick Star stuff. You know, I just try and catch, you know, Rattlestick gave me my first job as an actor. So, and I'm, and I'm a literary oh. reader on Rattlestick. So I oh. tend to, I tend to read a lot of that stuff. I, there are also a lot of playwrights who are not fully on the produce. So like Philip Howes, mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of him because he's a big, he's a big, vast writer. People can't handle him. They yeah. need to get on the good foot. Uh, the youngins like Jeremy O'Harris, like who are just kind of like ballsy and interesting and sexy and yeah, I'm just, I'm really very much pulled in the direction of like the newer playwrights I think that people have not yet um, gotten onto. Um, mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, and I'm funny so, I'm funny so literally right now I'm like, if people are like, who's your favorite playwright? I'm funny so, Odofia is my favorite playwright. Her cycle, I've, I've worked on her cycle as an actor, I'm just like, they don't understand! Um, you know, and then like the G's, you know, yeah. Lynn Nottage, like oh, the yeah, G's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, true. who are just like, Wayne you know, so black so women bad. who are out here telling stories unapologetically, um, any story, um, conquering the world, the theatrical world. Um, th that all inspires me. Anyone who really kind of actually decides to write a play to me is inspiring. Oh, wow. Because it's hard. It's hard to do it. And, it, yes. and and every play has an audience that they just haven't really found, is my belief. So for me, it's like, if everyone could actually just find their audience, mm -hmm. like you'd actually, there's a bunch of just great plays in our midst that maybe just didn't have the right director or the right production or the right mm -hmm. whatever. So anyone who really is writing anything, I really try and see, because I get value out of everything, even though I, be, I do be saying shit is trash. But, <laughs> but aren't we all off screen? <laughs> off screen. <laughs> but, I did get value from most of the things that I've seen. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you just, you, you learn a lot, so, yeah. So, now that you are an off-Broadway playwright, <laughs> if you could give advice to your younger self, Whew. what is something that you think you would say? Younger playwright self or just younger self self? Because younger, I'm still a young playwright. This is play number two. This is like, I'm only three or four years out. Well, since you, you're an actor and a playwright, I guess, you know, I don't. I guess yeah. younger self really, uh, play, writing was always my like my thing. Mm -hmm. I was a poet. <laughs> That's such a <laughs> silly thing to call yourself um, if you're not actually good at it. But um, uh, I wanted to do poetry. I wanted to go to school for creative writing and poetry and then I ended up being an actor. Mm -hmm. So I guess for me, it's like listen to your first instincts or don't be afraid to tell your story. Your story is completely valid. Mm. Um, and you will, and again, you will find your, you will find your audience, you know, like your story is valid. And that audience may not look like the Atlantic Theater. That audience may look like 30 people in this room. That your audience may look like Bushwick Star. It might look like Ars Nova. It mm -hmm. might look like Dixon Place. You know what I mean? Yeah. It might look like Lincoln Center, you know? But it's okay if it doesn't look like Lincoln Center. Um, and I think that that's the big thing too. It's like we have all these really beautiful lofty goals, but the, you know, there's really nothing as pure as when we did the first reading of Good Grief, at, when we did the first uh, workshop of Good Grief at Intar, when like Lou Moreno, mm -hmm. shout out to Lou Moreno, who's a new papa at Intar. Uh, <laughs> oh, he's a new papa, awesome. shout out. That's great. Um, uh, there was nothing more pure than when we just kind of kickstarted yeah. mm -hmm. and like, put up this play in a 60 seat theater because he gave me a free space because I wanted to do it. Yeah. There's nothing more pure than that. We didn't have to worry about if people liked it. We just wanted to know that, we just wanted people to come. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's all yeah. we wanted. I just want people to show up. Mm -hmm. um, and now it's like reviews and now it's like, Blah, blah, blah. Like, not, I, mean, yeah, I actually yeah. don't give a fuck about reviews, but you know what I mean? Like now it's like yeah. all the, you know, will people like it so that I can get more plays done right, right. so that I can maybe get a commission when like so literally. Can make a living off right, of while the first goal was like make the thing and I hope people come. That was it. <laughs> that was it. That was the, you know, and I hope they don't throw tomatoes at us, you know. Mm -hmm. um, that was the only goal. And so for me, it's remember that that's the goal. The goal is to make the thing, invite the people and like, Get them to love it, you know, and 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 be as honest as you possibly can. That's the main thing. That your stories are completely and totally worth it. And keep the goals. The pure is the wrong word, but keep the goals simple. And the goal is to get people to see it and to like make the thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? All right. Last question. So. On our show, we mm. recommend great theater. We mm. recommend great fire off of Broadway, off Broadway theater. We would like you to recommend anything God. you want, anything you want to our audiences. I can recommend um, mezcal alcohol. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
yeah. I can recommend Next Mezcal. Time. It's got a smoky flavor. So good. Uh, it's not quite tequila, but it'll give it to you right with mm. like a cherry salt pepper rim. It's like it's like the it's like the scotch of like clear liquors. Look, yeah, that's what I can recommend to you. That's what I got for you. Yo, mezcal, underrated liquor. Mezcal. Shout out mezcal. <laughs> Thank you for coming on. Thank, Thank you for having you. me. Thank Absolute you so pleasure. Much. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thank you. And happy new year. Happy, happy new, new year. year. Happy new year.